Number 35. Consider a gray squirrel falling out of a tree to the ground. A. If we ignore air resistance in this case, only for the sake of this problem, determine the squirrel's velocity just before hitting the ground, assuming it fell from a height of 3 meters. Okay, so let's draw a little picture. This dot will represent the squirrel, and unfortunately the squirrel finds itself in a position where it is falling. So, um, it says that uh, we want to determine the velocity just before it hits the ground, so let's just assume that this is the ground over here. Okay, so it wants us to determine the velocity right here. So I would assume that that would be a final velocity. And um, it falls out of a tree, right? So therefore it probably wasn't moving at the moment. Um, so that means the initial velocity here is zero. I'll just put this in meters per second. And uh, it says that it fell from a height of three meters, right? So the distance or the displacement from here on down is going to be three meters. Now I'm going to call it negative three meters. Okay. Uh, the reason why is because the problem we're, we're talking about um, an object, in this case the squirrel, moving down in the negative y direction. Therefore my velocity should be negative, my displacement should be negative. That also means though that my acceleration would actually be positive because it would be pointing in the opposite direction. All right, so just keep that all in mind. All right, so, okay, so that's basically all it gives us. And, um, and now, meaning, when I say acceleration, I'm talking about if there is a force, right, after it hits the ground and it starts slowing down, there's a force that is pointing up. I don't mean that all the accelerations in the problem are negative, be uh, uh, excuse me, positive, because we do have the force of gravity in this problem. Right? And the gravitational acceleration is always negative because it's pointing down. All right? So... Let's take a look. So we actually also do know that in addition, right? Because this is a free fall problem. So the acceleration due to gravity, that is, is always going to be negative 9.80 meters per second squared. All right. All right. So let's see. Do we have enough information to solve the problem? So what we need to know is we need to look for a formula that relates to final velocity, the initial velocity, the acceleration, and displacement. And it looks like we do, right? If we go over to the right-hand side, it looks like the fourth formula here will work out nicely. So let's calculate that letter A down here. So the final velocity oops, squared should be equal to now the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. Okay, so the final velocity uh, squared, right? We don't know the, we're looking for the final velocity. So the initial was zero, so that's simple. 2 multiplied by the acceleration, and the acceleration in this problem is due to gravity, right? Because the object is in free fall, so that's why it's negative 9.80. And the displacement it traveled was negative 3 meters. Okay, um, and by the way, let me just be careful, this is 3.0. I'm going to make sure just for significant figure purposes, all right? That means I'm just going to alter this slightly on up here, okay? And I'll put this as 0 0.0 meters. All right. So let's do some math. So the final velocity squared should be equal to now, uh, let's turn on the calculator, two times negative 9.8 times negative three. And that works out to be 58.8, uh, but I can only have two significant figures in my answer. All right, so it's gonna leave me with 59. Okay, so that works out well. And then, um, to solve now for VF, we would have to take the square root of both sides because I got to get rid of the square. All right, so when I do so, let's plug that in. All right, and now it becomes radical of 59. And it becomes 7.68, right? But I have to round to three, two sig figs, so it's going to be 7.7. 7. All right, and this is meters per second. Now, technically, when you take the square root, the answer could either be positive or negative. So really, that's the technical answer, plus or minus, all right, 7.7. .7. But now the thing is, only one of those in the context of this problem, given the direction in which the object is moving, uh, only one of these signs, the positive or negative, will be the correct answer. And since it's traveling downward in the negative um, y direction, we would have to give the negative answer, all right? So the final velocity here is going to be negative 7.7. 7.7 .7 meters per second. That's the answer.
Okay, so that's part A. Now let's take a read over um, part B. If the squirrel stops in a distance of 2.0 centimeters through bending its limbs, compare its deceleration with that of the airman in the previous problem. Okay. So basically what's happening now is um, we're, we're really focusing in now, if, I, if you guys look back at the picture, we're focusing in now on this particular area when the squirrel is just hitting the ground. Okay, so I'm essentially going to blow this up and, um, you know, zoom in on that particular area. All right. So now the squirrel is essentially, right, hitting the earth here, okay, with a velocity, as we just calculated, of negative 7.7 .7 meters per second. Right, so the velocity right here is going to be the initial velocity. Okay, now the final velocity of letter A becomes the initial velocity of letter B because I know that I'm talking, I want to calculate the stopping time when it actually makes contact with the Earth. Okay, so the initial velocity here is going to be negative 7.7 .7 meters per second. You know, so make sure you understand that point because it's an important point in terms of framing the problem. Initial velocities, final velocities, they're just relative. They're just relative to what the frame of the problem is. So um, our initial velocities is uh, negative 7.7. .7. When it finally comes to a, a stop, right, it's going to, final velocity is going to be zero meters per second. And it says that the distance that it covers here by bending its little legs, okay, is going to be uh, 2.0 centimeters. 2.0 centimeters. Okay, so it wants now us to calculate the deceleration. Okay, now this should be the positive acceleration, and you'll see how that should work out, because since it's stopping, there must be a force facing upward. Okay, so first thing I notice, I need consistency in my units. I have centimeters in the displacement, but meters and meters in my velocities. So I have to do a conversion first. So let's, do, let's convert the two centimeters into uh, meters. So centimeters on the bottom, meters on the top. For every one meter, there's 100 centimeters. And we can just do our conversion nicely now. So 0 0.020 meters. Great. So I'm just going to write that up here. X is equal to 0 0.020 meters. Okay. So now I can do my calculations. All right. So I need to consider a formula, right? We're trying to find A. So consider a formula that relates displacement, acceleration, initial, and final velocities. And oh wait, it's the same exact equation we just used. Right? So final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two multiplied by the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So now the final velocity is zero. Right? The initial velocity is negative 7.7. .7. That's gonna be squared. Plus two multiplied by my acceleration, which is what I'm trying to find. And now the displacement over which this acceleration occurred is going to be 0 0.020. That's the value that we just calculated. So let's do some math. Right, so 7.7 .7 squared comes out to 59.29. All right, so zero, well, zero squared, I don't have to plug that in, right? So uh, negative 7.7 .7 squared came out to 59.29, but I need only two significant figures, so therefore it needs to be 59. Okay, plus two times the acceleration multiplied by 0 0.02. So this should work out to 0 0.040a. Okay, uh, let's now move the, oops, let me just fix that a a little bit. So let's now move the, um, uh, oh, I almost forgot one thing here, right? And that's why my signs would have been off. So I, I'm thinking, I know the acceleration has to be positive, but I'm just thinking forward and my acceleration is going to come out to be negative. What did I forget? Well, I forgot that when I plug in my displacement here, it has to be negative. Okay, why? Because again, the squirrel is still traveling downwards, right? It's still going in the uh, negative y direction. So I need a big old negative there. Okay, not going to make a big deal, but it will make a big deal in terms of the, um, in terms of the signs in the problem. All right, I'll get, the, I'll get the right magnitude, but I just won't get the right sign. So that should be negative there. Now let's add the acceleration on over, 0.040a. That cancels. So this is 0.040a is equal to 59. 
and divide this out now. 0, 0, 0.040. So A is 59 divided by 0 0.040. Two significant figures, right? So now my um, now my acceleration will be all round. It's going to be 1.5, right? Times 10 to the 2. One, no, times 10 to the 3. Silly mistake. And that's meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration of the squirrel. It's, now it says compare that with the uh, deceleration of the airman in the previous problem. So let's just flip back to the previous problem. Here it is. And the deceleration now of the airman was 480 uh, meters per second squared. So the squirrel's deceleration is almost three times greater than the airman's. It's kind of uh, kind of crazy if you think about it, right? The, and the airman, right? If you and if you go back to the prior video, you'll see it all worked out. But that airman fell. What was the distance? Six thousand meters. Yeah, there it is at the top in the highlight. Six thousand meters. So, anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. And uh, if it did, please subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.